Hi, Chrissy. Good morning, Anna. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. Good. Now, before we start, I just want to make sure you're aware that I'm recording. Yep, that's fine. Okay, wonderful. Okay. I'm an open book. I'm an open book. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was going through your Changing My DNA website, and um, there's so many things on there. Oh, my gosh. I don't know where to start. So how about if we just start? <laughs> um, what are you up to? Um, day 500 and 460? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm 459 today. Okay, good. And so about, I think that's like 15 months. It's wonderful. And, um, yeah, it is wonder. It is wonderful. Um, and it continues to, to get more wonderful, too, especially when I'm fasting. That's the, that's the big thing for me, which is scary for most other people in my life. But um, when I am fasting and drinking my own water, um, the healing benefits are tremendous, and they continue on even after when I stop a fast, and uh, you know the the healing benefits still continue. Right. But mostly when I don't have any food in my system, and I'm getting all the nutrients um, from my own water and being cleaned out from my own water and distilled. Um, water, because I do combination, so. Perfect. Um, so you find that you have a, a better um, result when you're not eating? Well, just because of my particular situation, I've had um, diabetes since I was 10. Okay. And I've been on insulin since I was 10. Um, you know, I first injected like, I think it started one shot a day, and then when I was in my early 20s, I started, like, four shots a day, one before breakfast, one before lunch, one before dinner. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, one before I went to bed. And um, then in 1992, when I was 32, I got an insulin pump. And uh, so that's what I have connected to me right now because it gives a small – amount of insulin every it gives actually I can give you know even a tenth of a unit of insulin at a time so it it, it almost it kind of mimics a pancreas mm -hmm. but not really not really yeah okay so um so um that's that's how it all started so in the last 15 months what changes have you discovered and what um, actual changes have you made to your diet and increasing the distilled liquids that you've um, added into your diet? So. Yeah. So first off, I dropped 10 pounds, which I had carried around with me my whole life. I always was trying to get rid of it. I could never get rid of it. Um, you know, at times I would lose it and I would gain it right back the next year. Um, because I always tried to maintain my weight at a proper level because that's very important when you're, when you have diabetes. So I dropped that 10 pounds. I would say almost, it seemed instant. I mean, I would say it was in three months that I was, you know, or maybe two that I had dropped my extra weight and I've maintained, um, my ideal weight now for 15 months. I just... I don't lose, I don't gain, I just seem to um, maintain my weight. So that was, I guess, one of the first things. The other first things was my sinuses. I had always had problems with lots of um, phlegm in my system, and my sinuses instantly cleared up. Um, then I think I started feeling my joints become more flexible um, because diabetes, like, you would look at me and you would never in a million years think I had anything wrong with me, right? Yes. But inside, 
it it ages you much faster than somebody who doesn't have any disease. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and, and you know, uh, I'm thinking since ten years old. That and being on insulin, um, that has to have some kind of major effect on deteriorating your body. Exactly, and 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 that's exactly what was happening. And as I aged, I I started to have this fear in my mind of, oh my God, what am I going to be like? You know, I'm 52 now. What am I going to be like in five more years? What am I going to be like in 10 more years? And and this is probably the biggest joy for me about distilled liquids. I no longer have that fear. I no longer have that fear. I, And the reason is because I'm actually reversing my age now. So, so it went, so I started to feel it in my joints. I started to be, become more flexible. Um, I started noticing my skin, my pores on my skin were getting smaller. I started to like the way I looked better. You know, just overall, my, my skin was more moist. The and Okay, I'm just going to tell it all. So, I mean, the, the, the skin on my feet, on the bottom of my feet, before I started distilled liquids, was cracked. And, you know, I was constantly working on trying to maintain, you know, some level of any type of smoothness to my feet. And that just wasn't happening. So right now I feel my feet and they are like a baby's butt. I mean, uh-huh. it's just, it's weird. It's That's just, wonderful. You know, that, it, it is. It's, it's, it's wonderful, but it's strange too to, to, to have these things happening when, especially inside my mind, I thought, you know, the complete opposite was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, oh, digestion. Digestion. Oh, digestion. So I have cut back since I've started drinking distilled liquids, which, um, you know, I do a combination every day. I drink my own water and uh, just distilled water out of a jug, 89 cent, you know, yeah. gallon of distilled liquids, distilled water. Perfect. So um, when I first, I, when I first heard about distilled liquids, I immediately stopped eating and just started drinking my own urine. And that then 12, I I did that for 12 days. And um, I think that jump started me Uh into into my healing, um, because after 12 days, I didn't fast any longer, but I did reduce my consumption a lot. And um, I now mostly eat whole foods is what I, you know, my goal is just, you know, whole foods, greens mostly. Um, I eat a lot of salads and I spend a lot of time cutting up really small, you know, carrots and cucumbers and, um, you know, peppers and, you know, whatever it is that I put on my salad, I, I always try to cut it up as small as I can just to digest it easier. Yeah. Um, and what else? I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't eat a lot of food because I feel like I'm being nourished by my own water. I mean, it's a weird concept, but it, it's, it's true. And it's, you know, it's, that's how I survive. Well, very, and very well too. I, I feel very strong. I feel very healthy. I feel, um, I feel at peace with myself, which is another, you know, just huge. Yeah, I want to confirm that for you because um, I guess it was in 2011, or yeah, some or somewhere around there. I um, I went for three weeks and just ate um. Six different greens. Um, it was kale, celery, cucumbers, parsley, spinach, and green apples. And I was, and I didn't have a juicer, so I put them through a food processor, which made it into baby food, <laughs> for yeah. lack of a better word. And yeah. I ate that 
religiously for three weeks, and what I, the first thing I noticed, besides all the weight loss, was it took away that, I guess, craving or that yeah. that, that need to want to eat. Like, I, I never felt hungry. I never felt like I had to eat something. And, and consequently, I would eat once a day. I wasn't eating three or four or six or eight times. You know what I mean? I, I just wasn't, yep. I didn't have that. And, that. and I think that's a direct result of not eating processed or cooked, anything cooked. I agree with you. It I just, totally agree with you. Yeah. So yeah. that was one of the, the, the great parts of it besides I lost 30 pounds in three weeks I mean uh, wow. that was just awesome but I'm telling you all I did was drink uh, distilled water and and ate that mush mash <laughs> <laughs> that I was taking up and everybody's looking at me like I was nuts yeah but when they yep. saw me when they could see like the pounds just dropping off of me it was like you know well yeah <laughs> yeah exactly um you know and 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 you know, that for a lot of people, the weight alone is going to bring on tons of healing, taking the weight off. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to take take it away from their knee problems and their ankle problems and, you know, all the other problems that are inside because a lot of it has to do with our gut, you know, what's inside our gut and how it's clogging us up. But, and that's one thing when you start distilled liquids that, one and you know this and I know this but everybody needs to be aware that there are those detox symptoms and you might be talking to Andrew about that but you know that you know you could feel nauseous you could feel um you know sick for days because your system is ridding itself of all those toxins and you want that out you do not want that inside your body you want that outside your body right Absolutely. So my digestion improved, my whole gut, you know, that whole system just improved immensely. Um, my kidneys, oh, oh, I, I, I um, you know, a diabetic always worries about their kidneys. Right, absolutely. And I felt my kidneys start to function like a normal person, like my kidneys used to function. And... That was exciting. My vision got better. My eyes, you know, I, I I can read the smallest print now. It even, sometimes I am amazed at how small of a print I can read just with my bare eyes. I went to the doctor without my, I, I forgot to bring my, um, my faraway glasses in. Uh, and because I drive with glasses and I, if I watch a movie, go to the movie theater, I bring my glasses but I forgot to bring my glasses into the doctor, and I did the eye test, and I passed with flying colors. Wow. Yeah. My my vision, my smell, my sense of taste. I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on about the healing. But lungs, breathing, oh, that was one thing. With, and I don't know, I'm sure it was the diabetes, um, because I attribute everything that, is an ailment of mine to the diabetes, but um, uh, breathing, like I could never run, I could never, um, I always had this, this, this lung capacity issue, and I would say that was it within a few months, two or four or five, I like, I was breathing like way down into my belly, and, um, and, yeah, that was exciting. That is exciting. So yeah. do you do you run now or do you do any aerobic exercises that you didn't do before that I do, like in the summertime when right. I it's you know, I mean I live in Seattle, not that we don't go outside in the rain because we do. Um but I have a trampoline, a little mini NEDAC trampoline in my house and I have a um a little jogger that you know, I use, and I have a chi machine that I shake my body with, and so I do those things on a pretty consistent basis, and in the summertime when it's nice, or even if it's nice in the winter, I will do, you know, I'll walk, run, but, and I feel like I can run forever now, whereas before, I would, you know, start up a little jog, and then I'm like, ugh, I gotta stop this, you know? Yeah. 
but now I don't. I, 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 I feel like I could run forever. I feel like I can jump forever. I feel I just have this lightness about me that I never had. That's wonderful. I'm typing as we're talking, so I'll have to do less uh, editing when I do the transcripts. But um, I'm trying to think. Um, I, you've listed like a gazillion different um, uh, improvements in your health, at least a dozen, possibly more. And um, I, get, I guess it's um, – I'm not sure if I'm hearing correctly – but for 15 months, you've been combining uh, your own and distilled waters, um, and you've uh, noticed all these different improvements to your health, to your body, and the I'm I'm oh I know what it is. I'm curious as to um, if you've decreased any of the insulin intake. That's the big thing. That's the big yep. part I wanted to know. Yes, definitely have um, decreased my insulin needs, and um, I I think I started at about when I started this. I was and and I have to just say this because when I started. I was fairly clean because I was working with this doctor. I was um, I was taking these really expensive drops under my tongue, ribonucleic acid drops, and I was I was um, drinking sulfur, and I was oh my god! I, I mean, I could go on and on. I was spending so much money. What does so the much. sulfur do? The sulfur cleans out. It, it's almost like a food in the morning, and it cleans out your system. It it just basically cleans out your system. It's it's organic um, sulfur flakes wow. is what it is, and, and you mix it. It tastes horrible. It it tastes horrible. You mix it with like I, I was mixing like just a big heaping teaspoon in the morning, and this was before I, I. And then I did that a little bit as I started to drink the distilled liquids, but now I don't even do the sulfur anymore because. I feel that the distilled liquids, and what we didn't talk about was volume, the gallon. Uh huh. Absolutely. Yeah. So important. So, um, I, I didn't talk about that, but I'm I'm sure that that you will. Yeah. Well, let's go back to the insulin. When you yeah. started 15 months ago, what was your intake on insulin? I would say I was probably about 15, 20 units. And now I'm down to about nine. Okay. So, um, yeah, I have reduced my insulin, and that's that's it, the whole goal. Yeah. Is that per day, or is that uh, that per twenty four hours? Okay. Yeah, that's right. a per twenty four hour period. Yeah. Um, my only uh, experience with diabetes is my dad had it, and he was taking insulin before he died, and he was also um, getting dialysis. But he, uh, consequently, as a result of an injury to his foot, um, he had part of his foot removed, and then he um, he ended up dying because he refused to have the rest of his foot or leg removed because he. Um, he was dying, you know, he had a, what do you call it, when they turn black? Gangrene. Gangrene, yeah, he had gangrene, and, and I found out after he died, and I didn't know anything about, it was in 2006, so I knew nothing about distilled liquids at the, that time, and not that he would have been open to it at all. But his wife, when when he lost the first section of his foot, he, he, he lost around the, um, the arch, the right before the arch of the foot, on I think on his left foot, she called him half a man because he had his foot cut off, and she really berated him because he had that surgery, and wow. I had no idea that that had had gone on, that he had really technically been abused, and he was my father was a very physically uh, abusive father and person and wow. also he, he was emotionally unavailable I mean I don't remember I mean I could probably count in the bag how many words we said between each other in all the years you know I, he was on this earth but anyway to make a long story short uh, and I did 
witnessed, but I wasn't aware of it at the time, someone who went into diabetic shock and ended up dying as yeah. a result of that. So um, I understand the importance of good nutrition and maintaining your health as far as that's concerned. But um, I think your story was unique because I think you were the first person who came forward with Andrew who, um, and uh, well, maybe Lance White too, but uh, I haven't been following his chronicle. But uh, that, that you, you know, your, your whole goal was to decrease your insulin. So I, I was really curious when you agreed to talk to me to really find out um, you know, have you have you ever at any point just stopped your insulin, or is it how how have you gone into the decrease mode? How have you been able to decrease how much insulin, just by well, measuring your blood sugar, or how does that work? Yes, 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 yes. I check my blood sugar, and uh, yeah, I check my blood sugar probably like ten times a day, which oh. I'm getting a I'm I'm in the process of getting a, a continuous blood glucose monitoring that's going to monitor my um, blood glucose every five minutes. So um, I should be, I'm, I'm hoping to get that next week. And that's going to even move me further along because now it's all a manual blood glucose check. So yes, that's how I did it. I, I, I check my blood glucose often and even waking up in the night to check it. Oh, wow. And um, I have reduced my consumption. So those two things has allowed me to reduce and the distilled liquids cleaning my body, you know, just cleaning my system out um, and getting rid of the calcification. Now, I, I, I'm just going to, and I, and I want to get back to what you said about your dad. I just have to mention this because 90% um, of the diabetic population and even 95% have type 2 diabetes. That's the type that your dad had, right? Yeah. Even though he was on insulin, he still probably had type 2 diabetes. He got it when he was an adult? Yes. Okay. Five to, there's, you know, I think about 5% have juvenile diabetes, which is what I have been carrying around with me, is juvenile diabetes. Um, so it, it the reason that I always knew that I could get rid of my diabetes was because of a, a book I read about type 2 diabetes. Because basically, it, you know, people will tell you that it's a completely different disease, but somehow the body's not utilizing insulin or it's not making insulin or whatever it is. So I always knew that if a type 2 diabetic could get rid of their insulin, uh, diabetes? Why couldn't I? And this is um, something, and I, I pulled this out because I wanted to, to actually read it, and I can get it to you, but um, so this is according to the Merck's manual, the M-E-R-C-K-S manual, the, that the exact cause of diabetes is unknown, but the cause lies in the inadequate production of insulin by the beta cells of the islets of Langerhans. And the cells are alive. It's just that they do not function. Okay? Yeah. So, so this is, and, and, and if anybody is wondering how they think I might get rid of my diabetes, is that the, the urea and the the other um, two and a half percent of my own water that's not, so y your own water is 95, your own urine is 95 percent distilled water. Right. Five percent, two and a half percent of that, the, uh, so the other five percent, two and a half percent is urea, um, which is in very expensive medications and face creams and um you know, it's a very valuable, valuable ingredient. And then the other 2.5% of mine is my own perfect medicine, which is going to help heal me and which is healing me. Um, but so what, what 
my own water is doing, and I believe the distilled water does the same thing. It just takes longer, and um, it just takes longer with if I was going to do it with with just distilled water and none of my own. But it's going to clean those cells, and it already is. I mean, I already feel things breaking off inside my body and moving through my body. It's it's it can be painful, and it has been painful. Um, but it's also a good feeling because it's like I know that stuff has to come out of me, you know? Right. I love, it's funny you said that because when I first started, um, I didn't have, like, the extreme detox because I think I was already eating better. I was eating the, the raw. I was trying different things that I had never eaten before, so I was kind of already in the process of it, so I, was, I wasn't going cold turkey. And what you're saying about feeling things, I actually felt a blockage, I'll say, because I don't have any other word for it, go from, say, the, the right side of my head across the top of my head to the left side of my head. Yep. And, and like a really fast um, motion, um, I, I don't know what the speed would have been, but I felt that thing zip across the top of my head. So I'm, I'm assuming it was some kind of blockage in my yep. brain or, so, you know, in one of my blood yep. vessels that I actually felt that bugger move. And, you know, I'm just amazed that I don't have, like... <laughs> <laughs> any kind of health issues because and <laughs> and one other thing that I noticed um maybe two years ago was I had um I think I had a blockage in my intestines because I got a fever and I hadn't been sick for a long time when I started this process and I and I think what happened is there there was some I came up against some kind of blockage inside my intestines and my body got the fever and I was so sick and I knew there was something wrong inside of me but I I couldn't put my finger on it cuz I had nothing to compare it to but after I had gone I don't think I threw up I just think I you know went uh, had uh, been constipated or whatever and went to the bathroom but once I went to the bathroom um whatever that was it it released itself so yeah. and and right now um I don't know if it's because of the stress I'm under with work and with school um I'm I want to say impacted I don't know what other word but I know from from my neck to my col bottom colon my anus that I am full of crap, yeah, and it's because I've been eating a lot of cooked breads and and pretzels and yeah. cheese, even cheese. And I'm usually I usually get di uh, diarrhea from eating any dairy products. I haven't had any diarrhea or none, nothing of that. And I've tried so many things. And the problem is, I ha what you were going going to get into the the drinking the quantity of the distilled liquids and I haven't been able to do that because of work and yeah. I even went to my mother's house and she has a distiller because I bought everybody in my family <laughs> when I learned about this I bought six distillers and I still have one in my closet my my youngest daughter not talking to me so she didn't get hers and um, I bought everybody in my family one per household a distiller and uh and I go to my mother's house for this past Christmas and I'm making water like two two times a day I'm making a gallon of water and she's actually criticizing me that I'm I'm making the water and I could feel myself like drinking less because she's saying something and I'm thinking well she worried about her electricity it, you know this is her house I'm trying to be like conscious of that so since before Christmas to to right now, the only times I'm drinking the the normal amount is on the weekends when I'm off. Right. And that's right. every other weekend. So I'm not, not even drinking water on a regular basis. So I'm completely impa I'm not like painfully impacted, but I'm consciously aware and concerned impacted. Like yep. I know I'm full of crap. And I'm <laughs> now and I'm just I'm like, Oh my God. And 
I know what to do, and, and the only other option is to quit my job. And there's, like, so many things are coming up that's, like, that's so in the picture. Oh. But, um, and I'm to the point now, too, and I'm not even going to worry about what's going to be the outcome. I'm not going to worry about do I have another job because the universe is going to provide. It knows I have needs and, and it's going to be taken care of. So I, I guess this has been a transformation of my mind and my thinking, not just my physical health, you know what I mean? And I didn't have any problems like you had. So right, right. Just incidental. So go ahead. I'm sorry. But, 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 you know, like I sit here listening to you and, and, and you say, you know, I don't have any problems like you have, but the thing is that, you will mm-hmm. if you continue up. You know, you will if you continue. Absolutely. And you know it. I mean, you know it, too. Absolutely. It, it's dehydration. We are, de- we are dehydrated. And, um, and, and Andrew and I had talked about this once, but we never really – and I, 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 I know he talks about it. And, but really, it is all about hydration. And we can't get hydrated by mineral water, spring water, mountain water, tap water. We cannot. I tried everything. I tried, um, I, I mean, I have a list of crazy things that I've tried to heal myself with. Um, and one of them that I thought that really was starting, to, you know, to make me feel better was um, these, they're called Prill, P, P as in Paul, R as in Randy, I-L-L, prill beads. And what they did is they removed a lot of the stuff from the water. They were, um, like, made out of, um, oh, shoot, I can't even, magnesium oxide or something. Anyway, um, and, and they removed a lot of the stuff out of the water, but not like, distilled water and the way that I know that is that I have a, a TDS meter a, a total dissolved solids meter and I put it in the prill water I put it in the distilled water I put it in my tap water I put it in I tested a lot of different waters the only water that was pure the only water that was pure was distilled right. it didn't have any dissolved solids in it and so when you, when you tell me, you know, when you talk about what you're going through right now, I can relate because I've been there. I know a lot of people that have been there. And it, and it, and it does. It, it, we're dehydrated. As a society, we are dehydrated. And, and we, eat, we eat crap and we're dehydrated. And what do we expect, you know? Right, <laughs> I, and I knew, and I knew what was happening to me. I, I understood that what I was eating was out of nervousness, was out of yep. anxiousness, or whatever unconscious eating. Basically, um, I felt hungry. So the more you eat the junk, the more you set up the cravings. Yeah, yeah I, I think so too. I know raw foods, and living on the West Coast. I must say, I, I ate raw. This was years ago. I ate raw for one year. I didn't eat anything cooked. Um, and that year, I felt healthier than I had felt. I, I mean, I honestly, I have not. I feel very fortunate that I have been as healthy as I have been. I've ha- I have my issues. I have, I've had my surgeries. I've had laser surgery on my eye. You know, I have the complications of aging faster than your normal person but um when i ate had that whole year of not um and i haven't drinking haven't drank coffee in probably two years now but back then i didn't drink coffee i didn't drink wine i didn't anything i ate only raw and i felt so alive so alive yeah i believe it and um um, I really, I, I, in the back of my head, and after listening to you talking about not being hungry and not eating as much, I really, I, I'm starting to think that we don't need to eat because of, of what I'm learning about the pra- your intestines is the prana. That's uh, where the energy is supposed to move through. And I'm not saying that food can block it, but... Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it can. 
but I think it I think it can block it only in the sense that it it it's blocking something which is making you feel different which makes your whole being I don't know yeah but maybe maybe it can't I don't know I really don't know about that yeah, I don't know either. I'm just I'm just kind of like looking at – I keep my mind open, which I never did before. But now since mm-hmm. I've been drinking distilled water and my own urine, I can I can do that. I can really honestly uh, go into things without that fear. Um, yeah. I'm, and, I'm, and I'm finally to the point where – and I think it's all because of the distilled water liquids. I really do. I don't think it's – and and if I have been drinking my own urine more frequently, and I don't do it, basically because I'm afraid, <laughs> I'm afraid to smell like urine because when I use it around my family, I have to listen to it. Boy, I, it smells like pee in here. Oh, what's that smell? You know, all that. Okay, okay. So let me let me just tell you how I do it, and I because I'm married and. Um, you know, sh- share the same bathroom with my husband in the same bed and. And um, are you talking this, you mean, of, of like holding the urine in the mason jars and, and the smell of that? Yeah, well, that too. But no, but like, like I want to put it on my skin because I know oh, that yeah. if I put yeah. it on my skin, it's going to uh, change yep. the appearance of it. But, you know, well, I know I'm going to wash it off in the morning. But if I just drank, like, m- drank my urine, is it is it going to smell in my breath? Is it going to come out of my pure pores? Am I going to smell like urine, uh, you know, in public? I'm not concerned if about that. Not if, you're, not if you're eating whole foods. Not okay. if you're eating a clean diet. And that's what I have found because when, um, in the beginning, my urine was very metallic. It, it it tasted very metallic, and I was like, what the heck is going on? It must have been metals in my body coming out. I don't know. But, um, and and I was always very concerned, you know, about my breath. But when my diet is clean, I don't have that worry at all. Okay. At all. And, you know, that's the other thing about, you know, drinking your own water it's not fun to drink your own water when you're on a cooked, any type of cooked food diet. It's no fun, no fun. But if if you're only eating whole foods and drinking clean tea, then your own water is almost pure. I don't say almost. It's purer right. than It's a clear. It tastes, it's, it tastes yeah. like nothing almost. Yes. I yeah. mean, it's pleasant to drink it. You, you're not like when you first start. You're like, oh my god, I gotta drink this shit. Exactly. <laughs> like, oh. exactly. But then you know, after a day or two, then you're like, and I know the more that I drink it, but but I I can't do that with my schedule. I'm just, I just I I haven't been able to get to that point where I can have that that sacred time to prepare to yeah. to put all this together. And yep. to do it in a peaceful, unhurried manner, and to, and to do it in a loving, uh, positive, you know, I'm I'm not operating there. I'm operating right. on panic and and you know hurry, and I I have to, you know, get three hours sleep so I can run back to work for nine hours, you know, and right. stay up all night, do whatever. Right. You know, that's how I'm functioning. Well, and your I, time will come, and your time, it will come, and it will probably come soon. It sounds like it's going to be coming soon. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm done with this nonsense. I'm, yeah. I can't, do, I can't live anymore like this. My, I don't want to, and it's not because I have a health problem. I don't want to have a health problem. I don't, I, I want to, I want to live the life that I know is the way that's the most healthiest. You know, I I want to do that, and and I and I want to do it effortlessly. <laughs> I don't want to do it drudgingly, or you know, trying to fit it in, or you yeah. know, all that kind of nonsense. I I just want to do it. Well, and that's the hard. That is the hard thing too. Is that you know we we still have people in our lives that, um, and still to me, to, I have a big family and. 
you know, I think most of them think that I'm a little crazy <laughs> for doing what I'm doing. Absolutely, and, they do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, they don't understand. Uh, they if they're ignorant, and it's the not that's bad on them. They're ignorant of other possibilities. And so I can't imagine not having a um, chronic disease and having to do what I'm doing. Not that it's hard what I'm doing, because it's not hard. But, like, I'm talking to you, listening to you, and even Andrew. I talked to Andrew because, you know, you guys are, you guys are, um, you have not suffered any major health problems. Right. And so I feel, I mean, this is really odd, but I feel very fortunate that I, I feel, and I always have felt grateful that I have carried around this disease because, I often think that if I didn't, I would be a an obese, alcoholic, drug addict. <laughs> I'm certain. I'm certain. I was. I, I, I'm just, I'm celebrating 22 years sober, so I, I've, uh, I've oh, been through all that. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. That's awesome. Right, right, right. right. But, yeah, okay. I understand exactly what you're saying, you know, that you're, you'd rather have this than have suffered other things because – you know, you might be being a, in a worse condition, but yeah. um, but what do you? What's your prognosis for the future? I mean, do you do you believe that there's going to be a day when you will be totally off the? Oh internet? yes. And how oh, long yes. do you think that will take? How long do you think? I can't even. You know, if you would have asked me 15 months ago, I would have told you six months. Wow. I'll be. You know, and if you would have asked me six months ago, I would have told you another six months. And so that's how positive I feel about the progression that of the healing that is occurring within my body. And you were telling me that story about um, that 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 shooting um, from your right from the one side yeah. of your to the other. Yeah. Well, I had a very similar experience in my, um, and this was not long ago. I don't know, a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago. It was in my, um, my, I have always had like this in my right neck area. I even would have a shooting pain that would go into my eye. Wow. And, yeah, and so in that whole right side of my body, my right shoulder was frozen at one point and blah, 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 blah. So the other day I go, I walked into the bathroom and I sneezed. I very rarely sneeze. <laughs> and I sneezed. And something, something broke off inside me, in my shoulder, and it was a pain. I had to go lay. I was alone in the house. I had a friend coming over. I had to go lay on the bed and um, was, like, crying out loud, moaning, crying because of the pain. But I felt it moving, okay? I felt it moving through me. I felt it move from almost my neck, down through my shoulder, down through my back, and it stopped in my right kidney. And it seemed like it went on forever, but it only took a couple minutes. Yeah. And um, and after, you know, I was like, it threw me for a loop. I mean, it threw me for a loop. I was like, oh, my God, what if I was driving and that happened, <laughs> you know? But um, so – Afterwards, and that's not the only time that has happened to me. Um, but after when the, when that happens, I feel a. Um, I, I know it was something healing in me because my whole shoulder felt looser, my whole neck felt looser. I I I, I mean I don't know how to describe it except miraculous. Yeah. You know? So that it is. that that. It is, and that's what's going to continue to happen to me until I am, until the 42 years of the accumulation of whatever has accumulated in my body. So to answer your question of how long do I think any more, I don't know. And any more, I don't really care because yeah. I'm, on a, I'm on a path of healing that that I'm reversing my age. I'm literally reversing my my age of my organs, my age of my joints, the age of my mind. And it is such an enlightening experience that that I can tell you 
oh, a year, you know, it's going to be another year or whatever, but honestly, I don't know. And I'm just happy in, in the way that it's progressing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you. And I, you know, time is just, uh, you know, it's a construct. It's really not what the goal is. The goal is how we feel and right. and how we live. How we can help other people. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and I, and I think um, with your chronicling, your process every day, you know, taking the time to even uh, write down so other people can see what you're doing is just an amazing, loving thing. Um, unbelievable. Yeah. You know, so I'm constantly putting my foot in my mouth in <laughs> situations with those people. Not for myself. I don't feel, I feel, I feel like I'm speaking my truth and I don't have a choice. I've been like this since I was a little kid. I scared the hell out of my family because I would tell them things or show them things <laughs> that people don't want to know, you know. Right. They don't want to hear about it. And, you know, it's just, I, just the way that I have always been. I've always been that way and I have a a pretty good picker when it comes to information like I know which way to go and and I've only been wrong I've been wrong a few times but like in one at one hand I can count on one hand but for the most part I, I've been pretty good at at selecting things based on just uh, the the title mm-hmm. yeah you know, and, and, intuition. and 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 knowing that uh, what Andrew like I didn't. I didn't like say in my head. Oh, Andrew sounds good. I think I'll I'll watch him. Or I just did it. I just followed him. I just called him. Somehow we got together and we did these interviews. Somehow I think I got the radio show on Blog Talk Radio just so I could talk to him. <laughs> but before I met him, I didn't know him well, before I went to Vilcabamba. I didn't know. I didn't know that I was going to meet these people. But like one foot in front of the other, I just followed yeah. whatever my higher self, I guess, was pointing me in a direction. And I, and that's how I got involved in this. I didn't. I wasn't like, oh yeah, let me go drink my pee. That sounds like good. <laughs> I never even. In fact, I, saw, I didn't even see Andrew's name on there. Galen, the guy who. Uh, who organized this this 12 day uh, extraordinary uh, event with, where I met Andrew in Vilcabamba, Ecuador? And he put on there he was going to do a talk on you're in, you're in, you're in for life or something like. But he spelled it you are in. Uh, you're in some other way, and then you're in a third way. He spelled it three different ways, and then when I grasped. What he even wrote on the, you know, <laughs> announcement. I was like, what? What? going to talk about it. what? <laughs> I couldn't even. I couldn't even. I couldn't even understand that. Why would we even be talking about that? I mean, what is that? <laughs> well, oh, you know, um, and you're 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 making me think. So, seven years ago, I, it was six or seven years ago. I don't I don't quite remember, but I. I'm all, I've always been searching what the cure is for juvenile diabetes. And somehow, some way, um, six or seven years ago, I came across it on the Internet. And I tried it myself, like you said. You know, I'm like, oh, my God, what? And And there was not the support. There was not, you know, we have our great group that we have. Um, there just there wasn't the distilled water aspect of it that Andrew discovered, um, and and so I think I I did it for a couple of weeks, and quit, and then seven years later, sure enough, it shows up again in my life, and I I was like, okay, you know, it's showing up in your life a second time for a reason. <laughs> you better do something about it. Isn't that interesting? And imagine if you had started back then and kept going, oh. where you would, you, you would, you would have been Andrew. I would have met you in Vilcabamba. <laughs> <laughs> but that's right. No, no. I, it's important to say that I, I tried it seven years ago, and and did you have any benefits? I I must not have. I don't even rem- I don't even 
really remember is I just I, I just remember that I did it and that I must not have been fasting. I must have been eating and drinking. Yeah, yuck. But that was the first <laughs> thing, exactly. That's the first thing Andrew told me. He's like, you know, fast and drink every sip. Fast and drink every sip. And And from that point forward, I did for 12 days. I did nothing but drink my own water and um, only ate to bring my blood sugar up. And I was mostly drinking coconut water at the time, which was the wrong thing. But that's another long story. We'll talk about it another time. But, um, but yeah, so I think that fast that I did in the first 12 days of finding out about distilled liquids was huge. It was huge because I don't think I would have had the same results if I just, I don't know that I could have fathomed or or if I could have, I don't know that I could have drank my own urine if I wasn't fasting. I don't know. But I immediately started fasting, immediately started drinking. And then now I will eat and drink my own water, but I'm mostly eating whole foods. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and that's what I do. I know that um I don't not eat. I have never really fasted maybe for a day or two, but um I what I will do is um I'll eat uh vegetables or or I'll drink uh juices. I'll you know, You'll- my own fresh juices. And I won't buy any juice. I'll just drink uh greens, usually green juices. Yep. So you're doing your you're doing like a juice fast or which is still hugely beneficial just to overeating. You yeah, know? absolutely, absolutely. Well, we've talked a lot. Is there anything that we didn't mention that maybe you'd like to add? Well, only the Water of Life book by John Armstrong. Okay. That book, and if anybody cannot fathom to think that they would drink their own water, replace the word urine with distilled water. And that book is invaluable. And there's a free link download. I think it's on Andrew's website, Aquarius, the water bearer, um, dot com. And there's a lot of other, of course, good stuff on that site. And um, my um, Facebook page, you don't have to be friends with me. Um, you can go direct to facebook.com slash changing my DNA, all one word, changing my DNA. And, um, yeah, that's really the only other two things. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was on there this morning looking at your website. And um, and I just think it's a beautiful, beautiful, uh, I don't know, just a, a loving thing that you're sharing your experience with everybody. And it's, it's just it's amazing. Helping, it's helping me. To, to journal like that, it's helping me as much as, and I am thrilled when I get the very few responses that I get about how people are, um, you know, just starting to drink their own distilled water or, I mean, distilled water or their own. And, you know, I'm, I'm always thrilled when I hear that, but, and I'm, I'm thrilled to help anybody I can help, but I will tell you it's a selfish endeavor to journal like that because it is, I think, one of the healthiest things we all can do is just to put our stuff out there, you know, in in writing or in journaling. I just, it's so healthy. I've done that all my life, and I, it sounds like you have too. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just... And I'm into so many things. I, I I'm trying to focus. I'm really <laughs> like most people. Like like you're into the distilled liquids. You're 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 working on that, and you're yeah. trying to improve your health and take care of your diabetes. So you, you kind of have that extension with me. It's kind of like um, I I'm into so many different things, but I also see the connections in all these things. So I kind of keep my 
you know, my vibrations open so I can have these itchy feelers out. And uh, and it's funny, um, Andrew posted last night in the middle of the night, I don't even know what time it was, something I had sent him six months ago, maybe it was, because um, I, I read the Falcon Alley book. Well, I didn't read it, but first I, maybe I opened to a page, I was looking at the pictures, and I found something that was specifically on distilled water, or it was on the living waters or something like that, and it pertained to distilled liquids. Yeah. And I took a picture of it, and I and I typed it out, what the page said, and sent it to him on his Facebook. And yeah. he reposted it again, and I was like, oh, my God. He was, like, reminded me that these yeah. connections are everywhere. I mean, you never know where you're going to look. And that's a book about architecture. That's not a book about just uh, – it's actually metaphysical. Um, wow. What do you call it? It's But it's basically a book of, on architecture, but it's – it's uh, ancient architecture, like uh, in Europe, there's uh, churches and stuff that they build and the things that they put on them, the the decorations and. Oh, interesting. But um, but in that book, it's oh, I'm trying to get alchemical. It's an alchemical book, which is what we're talking about. We're talking about, uh, we're changing from one thing and we're transforming it into another. Uh, wow. And and we're using the alchemical process, so that's what we're doing, right. and that's why I called my radio show Alchemical Connections because I know that it's there. These are processes that we're going through. We're right. we're we're finding these connections and we're transforming our lives and our thoughts, you know, and we're and we're transforming our world as a result of it. Oh, and there was one more question I wanted to to. Uh, ask you because um, I'm so into the metaphysical stuff. Do you think it's a combination of the positive change in the way that you think and believe in distilled liquids or do you think it's just distilled liquids or? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, oh, um, do I, okay, did you finish asking me the question? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I'm, I'm like, well, what I'm saying, you know exactly what I'm saying, go ahead. Um, I totally believe it's because I believe. I totally believe that it's because I believe in the distilled liquids. Um, now, of course, physically, I'm feeling and seeing what's happening to me. But if I didn't believe it, then I don't think it would be happening. Absolutely. And and I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, yeah, it is, it does because you're 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 using the manifestation process too. You're not just uh, you're not just going in and saying, oh well, I'm going to drink my urine and everything's going to be okay. No, no, you have a you have a connection with your higher self, and and you're going into this in a sacred spiritual sense that um this is this is a this is a a, a way of life. Yes, yes. And because I, the distilled liquids, I believe, affects the mind as much as it affects my body. And, I mean, I have seen and felt and, 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 and believe that it's because of, of what I'm, the, the peace that I am experiencing on a daily basis, I believe it's helping me to move forward with continuing what I'm doing. And so, yeah, I don't know if that makes any sense, yeah. but it's, it's affecting my – the distilled liquids um, have as much effect on my mind as it does on my body. And I have in my family um, mental illness, mm -hmm. and um, and not that, not that. Well, when you when you have that in your family, you are. I I would assume that everybody would be afraid that. Oh my God, what if it affects me? You know. Mm -hmm. um, and and I don't worry about that anymore either. Yeah. But you know. So, 
No, it's it, I have my my mother's father was uh, uh, we call it uh, schizophrenic. Yep. He was an alcoholic. My dad's yep. father had diabetes. He was an alcoholic. He lost two legs and an arm. Ah. And he died, I think, you know, with one arm. And um, he lived the horrible life. I mean, he, I guess he thinks he did what he wanted to do while he was out there doing it. But at the end of his life, you know, he couldn't talk. He, I think he was a wet brain. I really do. He was not communicative. He, he grunted. He made it. He made noises, and he would uh, signal like to what he wanted or what he wanted to do. He wasn't able to talk, wow. so it severely impaired his cognitive abilities. Not only his physical appearance, you know, having two legs and an arm removed, right. and his and his other arm was was not usable because I remember him being in a sling. Yeah. So he so his his second arm was on his way out as well. So he died before that took place. In fact, I was so young when he died. They put him in a coffin and he had the one hand there on his chest, and they put cardboard in their legs and put shoes on. And I didn't know. And you know, you're a little kid. <laughs> you think that they tell you when you die and go to heaven, you become whole again. And I thought he did. I thought he became oh. whole. And I thought it was a beautiful thing when I saw him oh. in the coffin. So it wasn't like a scary thing for me. It was like, oh, oh. wow. It was like, yeah. oh, yeah, he died and he became whole. Yeah. So it was like, it was kind of weird. Like, you know, now I'm thinking about it. It was like, oh, my God, you know. But it's it's just funny that, you know, how I learned life through all these un, you know, conventional convoluted things that were really a result of poor living of 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 misinformation and yeah and that's yeah. all it is and that's all it is it is poor living it's it's wrong eating and and you know mental illness and i believe this i think it was carl young said or maybe it was gandhi that you you know mental illness is is a direct result of uh, your mind trying to adjust to this this construct that is not conducive to health or life that we yeah. live in. So everything here is so distorted, and here we are, these perfect spiritual beings, trying to adjust ourselves to this insanity, basically. Yeah. And we're becoming insane as a result of it because we can't, we cannot function in it. But now. Uh, because we're getting good information and because we're realizing our innate power, you know, our our God being, our light, our lightness, whatever you want to call it, and then being able to clear ourselves out by drinking distilled liquids, by yeah. eating raw diets and, you know, and, and being around people who have the same, you know, desires in life and the same goals. It's just, right. you know, it's changing yeah. us. This, I think it's the whole thing. is like, but, don't, you know, don't ever, like the mental illness part, of me, I think we all have that. We all have it. And, um, you know. Right. We all, to a, to a certain degree, we all, we all experience that. And it's, it's because of the, of the, the, the construct here. It's not just because of the way we eat or drink. It's because of, of the of the society or the culture or mm -hmm. the politics, the, you know, whatever. It's all a combination it's of all thousands of years of this dumbing down. It's not, you know, just since they put the fluoride in the water. It's thousands and thousands of years of, and, and I just listened to a guy last night. I mean, that's what I spent my time doing. Bill Donahue, if you go on my Facebook page, or just type in Bill Donahue and go to videos. This guy's got like a gazillion videos, and he just talks about everything that had. And he goes by the Bible. He's 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 given the whole new interpretation of the Bible on a metaphysical level. What it really means, as far as our mind and our bodies are concerned. Hmm. And um, and I heard it on an interview. There's Kate Renee on your distillery. The distillery. She's in Kate. Yeah. Renee. She did an interview with Maxwell Jordan and Santos Bonacci, and it's go down. I mean, about a day or two, 
It was Friday she posted it. And I didn't even listen to the whole interview, but Santos Bonacci said um, this guy's name, Bill Donahue. And I immediately Googled him, and then I just started listening because I saw the topics. Like, they catch your eye. And yeah. I just I listened to about four or five of his one-hour lessons. Yeah. And all biblical. And he says the Bible is not uh, historical, but it does have – and it's all metaphysical, and it goes through – Everything and everything that I've learned, like as far as um, on a political level, like the, the Bible is uh, like there's no Solomon. He says there's no Daniel. He says they're all a symbol, symbolic symbols right, of, right, right. Of, of of astrology, and he's really uh, relating how the astro theology aspect of the Bible is totally ignored. And he goes and he reads actually reads. Bible uh, sections like Luke, whatever, and John, and and he gives the the quote of the of the, the astrology, and he explains what the words mean. This word really means astrology, you know, and he goes through the whole thing like how they how they masked it, how they totally changed it, and it's just it's like we kind of knew this information, but we couldn't put all the pieces together. And this guy's been doing it for twenty five years. And wow. He, and just now we're, we're discovering them. And the guy on the other side of the world, Santos Bonacci, is the one promoting it, and he's a friggin' yeah. out of Jersey. <laughs> he's where I'm living. It's like it's amazing. In fact, he's in Forked River where my father's wife moved with her daughter before she died. After my father died, she sold her a condo and moved in with her daughter to Forked River. That's the where same she, exact place that he lives. Stuff. What is Forked River? What does that mean? I'm giving, why would they call a place in New Jersey Forked River? And somebody last night, I was talking to my friend. Uh, her name's April Rain. She has the We War radio station, and she's into Liberty. She says, you're at, you're at a fork in the road, Christine, or Chrissy. She says, you um, you either have a salad fork or the other kind of fork with the two prongs. <laughs> has a three prong, and then you're going to be mixed up. She says, but they, and she said that to me, and it's like uh, these are my connections. These are the oh connections. my god, like oh That's my fun. god, it's like so crazy convoluted. I know, and I'm taking up all your time talking about no, no, no. And I so oh. appreciate this, and this is going to be a wonderful addition to the journal, and you're going to be my first. You and Andrew are going to be my first, and I want to try to do this. I'm going to do it monthly because I don't know if I have more time to do it. But I just want to, like, put out – because people ask so many questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just well, think um, – Would you let me know when, when you put it out? Would you – or let me know on uh, on either um, the distillery or my Facebook page or – I will message you and put the link up, and um, if I can send you a – a what do you call it? A file. I could probably send it. Uh, send you a file on Skype. I don't know if I can send it on Facebook, but I will have the files will be on my first Facebook. Uh, okay, good. And it's going to be called the Distillery E Journal, and they're all going to be in there. All everything's going to be posted there. Okay, and, good. And I and I talked to Danny. I think his name is Danny, and um. And he was asking me about what to post, blah, blah, blah. And I was debating on whether to make it open to where people could make comments on there or just make it so that it's just my information, whatever I'm posting with the journal. So I haven't decided yet about that. But um, but Danny's already engaged. I mean, he's in, he's – He's coming to me about it. So, and I know he's the monitor on the distillery. So, I'm. Um, I feel really good about that. And um, oh, every I mean, Don, are you talking about Donnie? Donnie Daggle? Donnie Daggle. Yeah, I'm saying Danny. Where I'm saying it ain't wrong. Yeah, he, he's awesome. He's awesome. So he's already engaged. And I accidentally added because I I I look at it so quick I don't pay attention. I added Santos Benaggi to the group. Yeah, <laughs> joined. So uh. I'm like. Oh my God! And I don't like to do that because I I don't like to be, to be uh, added to groups because then you get all those emails and a lot of yeah. people kind of shut them off. But I I'm not sending out any messages or anything and I, I and they'll have to shut it off themselves. They'll know how to do it. But that's going to be the um thing. So I'm going to check uh 
Oh, it said high sound coming from my speakers. Yeah, that's me screaming. But anyway, um, I'm going to let you go now because I have to use the bathroom. But I oh, love okay, Christy. Thank you. Nice, so nice. Much. And yeah, I love you. And um, take care of yourself. And I'll talk to you again soon, I'm sure. Thank you so much. We will definitely be in more contact. Okay. And and um, I'll definitely have you on the radio show. We're gonna we're gonna be talking about this a lot more. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good day. See you. Bye-bye. Bye.